Hi everyone, and I'm glad that you could join me for today's lesson about text insets. To all my new viewers, welcome to my FrameMaker lessons. I'll be referring to my previous lessons 1, 2, and 3 later on, so I've put a link to them in the description. We'll begin our lesson today by defining text insets and their usage, then move on to setting up our workspace and creating our files. Our work with text insets will consist of creating, importing, and editing a text inset. We'll then manually update our external file to reflect our text inset edits and conclude today's lesson by exploring the insets pod. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Text insets are source files that can be reused in multiple documents, which we will refer to as external files. Maybe you have a note, warning, or caution statement that you're using in many external files. Here's the great thing about text insets. Rather than go through the tedious process of editing all your external files containing the text inset, all you have to do is edit your source file. Then voila, next time you open your external file with the automatic update turned on, you'll see your changes. Before we jump into working with text insets, let's discuss how to set up our workspace and create our source file and external file. We'll use the following toolbars and pods today. Quick access bar, table toolbar, insets pod, and anchor frame pod. Also, I have saved my workspace for easy access in the future. We'll be working with two files today. The first is called Lesson 4 Source File, which has the standard extension .fm. This file will act as our text inset. The second file is called Lesson 4 External File, also with the .fm extension into which we will import our text inset. For comparison purposes later in this lesson, I type the following sentence in my external file. This is a normal sentence. If you're a first timer to our videos or need a refresher about workspaces, check out lesson one, user interface and workspaces. Feel free to pause the video for a minute to set up your workspace and create your files. Now that your workspace and files are organized, let's learn how to create a text inset. First, go to Lesson 4 Source File. You'll notice that my text inset contains the following information. A note, a table, and a graphic. To create your own text inset, you'll want to type in any sentence, insert a table, and import a graphic. You're welcome to use my text inset as an example or create your own. However, it's important that your text inset contain a sentence, a table, and a graphic of some kind. If you're joining us for the first time or need a refresher on working with tables or graphics, check out Lesson 2, Tables, or Lesson 3, Graphics. When you finish, make sure to save your source file. Feel free to hit the pause button while you create your text inset. Now that you've created your text inset, let's import it into our external file. Go to Lesson 4 External File. From the File menu, stand on Import and choose File. The Import dialog box appears. You can also open this dialog box with the keyboard shortcut, Escape F I F. Ensure that the Import by Reference option is chosen. Select the Lesson 4 source file. Click Import, and the Import Text Flow by Reference dialog box appears. Let's look for a minute at the available options when importing a text inset. First, you can choose the flow to import. You have the options body page flow or reference page flow. 
We'll choose Body Page Flow to import our text inset into the body page. You can also choose the formatting of the imported flow. You can reformat using the current documents catalog, which changes the text formatting in the source file to match the catalog in the external file. You can also reformat as plain text, which changes the text to plain text. Your last option is to retain the source's formatting, which keeps the formatting from the source file. We'll choose to reformat using the current documents catalog. The last category of choices is the updating of the imported flow. If you choose automatic, any changes you make in your source file are automatically reflected next time you open your external file. We'll choose Manual to learn how to manually update our external file to reflect the text inset edits. Click Import and the text inset is imported into your external file. Notice that I can select the text of the sentence, this is a normal sentence, while the text inset acts as one object. Any edits to my text inset must be done directly in my source file rather than my external file. Let's go ahead and do this. Go to Lesson 4 Source File. Now, edit your note. I will change all the letters from lowercase to uppercase by using the keyboard shortcut Ctrl Alt U. In addition, edit your table. I will use the Add Row Below button located on the Table Formatting Toolbar to add two empty rows below. You'll also want to edit your graphic. I will change the alignment of the anchor frame from left to center in the anchor frame pod. Make sure to save your file. Now that we've finished editing our text inset, let's manually update our external file to reflect our changes. Go to Lesson 4 External File. From the Edit menu, choose Update References. The Update References dialog box appears. Choose Text Insets marked for Manual Update and click Update. You'll notice that the note is now in all uppercase letters. Your table contains two empty rows below and your anchored frame is aligned center. These changes confirm that your text inset was correctly updated in your external file. Let's wrap up text insets by exploring the view and search options along with the action button in the inset pod. You can view general information about insets, including the referenced file or the location of the text inset file, type of inset, document name, and page number where the inset is located. You can also search for an inset in the list by typing your search in the search bar. The insets pod contains the following action buttons. You can import a new inset into your file using the Import New button. The Properties button shows you the properties of each inset. To view the text inset properties, stand on the text inset and click the Properties button. The text inset properties dialog box opens in which you can view and modify the text inset settings. Convert the text inset to editable text. Manually update the external file to reflect the text inset edits. Or open the source file. To view the graphic inset properties, stand on the graphic inset, in this case our image, and click the properties button. The object properties pod opens where you can view and modify the object properties. Double click to minimize the pod. Use the delete button to delete the inset. 
Deleting the graphic with the anchor frame can only be performed from the source file. Go to the text inset location in your file by clicking the Go to Location button. Use the Convert button to convert the text inset to editable text. That's the end of our lesson. Let's briefly summarize what we learned today. We introduced the topic of text insets by discussing what text insets are and how we use them. Then we organized our workspace and created both our source file and external file. We learned how to create, import, and edit a text inset. Finally, we manually updated our external file to reflect the text inset edits and practice using the insets pod. Make sure to like this video and share the link with others. I'd like to give a special thanks to those who commented on Lesson 3 graphics on my YouTube channel. Your feedback is much appreciated. Please continue leaving your comments, questions, and suggestions. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to do so. Thanks again to all my viewers, and I'm looking forward to our next lesson. See you next time.